Good afternoon. My name is Håkan Leifman, working with the Planet Use team and a specialist in um, prevention capacity assessments. I'm situated, located in Stockholm, also linked to the Karolinska uh, Institute as a researcher. So for the coming 20 minutes or so, I will talk about one module offered within the Planet Use uh, Prevention Program, which is the Prevention Capacity Assessment, the PCA, that has been developed for the, for the last two years as one, one of the modules that, that is really offered to the, to the communities, to the local level. I will present some more um, general parts about the structure, what it is about, but also give some examples how it could be used on the local level. The background of the PCA is, is really quite simple in a way. We know that, um, that building structures, if you have a solid structure on the local level in terms of policy, organization and resources, that will actually facilitate long-term implementation of programs, models. We, we really want to avoid short-term pro projects. We want to have a sustainability. And if you're building, if you have a solid structure that will really facilitate the implementation of, of different programs, models like the Icelandic prevention model. And if we look at the literature on prevention, but also on promotion of of alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs, but also in a broader public health perspective, they really, all of them stress more or less the same. They, they stress this, the importance of having uh, intersectoral collaboration and cooperation. They stress the importance of having some kind of steering group, so people working together, and that these steering groups should have a broad representation of, from different sectors. Of course, our arena of uh, alcohol, tobacco and drug touches upon different sectors. It's not just one sector's resp responsibility. They stress the importance of clear goals and mandate, not the least from the local leaders, so that the prevention workers now know how to work in what directions. That is so important. They usually stress a kind of whole of community approach or maybe a health in all policy approach really saying that this is a shared responsibility across local sectors and with also with other stakeholders, with several stakeholders. They talk about the importance of long-term funding. They talk about the importance of knowledge, the know-how on the topics, and also of a kind of gradual building up of a knowledge base on the local level. It's not enough with a knowledge base on the national level. It should also be grounded on the local level. They also talk about documentation and follow up as kind of regular processes and that you follow up and document the processes itself, but also the outcomes, of course, of course, like the drug situation, the, the prevalence of um, alcohol consumers over time, has it changed or not? That is about the structures, you know, but then we also have to have, of course, activities. It's not enough with only the solid structure. You have to do things to reach out to the citizens not to least to, to the young people. So we need different activities and the literature is quite clear. You have to have a broad spectrum of activities. You need to touch both on the demand side to try to, to, to reduce the demand of alcohol, but also the supply side, the, the availability, the accessibility of alcohol, tobacco and other drugs. So both softer and harder measures, so to say, are needed or what I sometimes say, trust. You need to have a trust, change the attitudes, the information, uh, changing the norms, but also this control side, limiting the availability, the opening hours, the accessibility. And when it comes to the availability, uh, that's always important. And if you read the literature, reducing or limiting the availability of alcohol, tobacco and drugs is so important, not at least for young people. That is a kind of basic factor. Of course, also driven by national legislation, but there is still scope for local, local actions, although it looks different in different municipalities in different countries. 
So assessing the capacity, monitoring, assess assessing the capacity, it's include, as I said, structures and activities. And preferably it should be done in municipalities that are using or even better are planning to use the Icelandic prevention model. You get a baseline of how it looks like and that will facilitate the implementation of the model that will come after the baseline. And preferably the, the assessment and the, the results should be used proactively. You could use it for follow up over time, but also to use it as a kind of instrument itself, as a means to improve the situation. If, it, if we see that there are some weak points, weak parts in the prevention work, we should of course look at that and maybe come up with some actions that will improve the structures or improve the activities. So it's a kind of combination of as a means to improve directly, but also for follow-up purposes. Basically, the PCA, the Prevention Capacity Assessment, carries two, really two main areas. One is, of course, the prevention. The other is the readiness or the readiness to change, uh, readiness for further improvement in, in the prevention, so to say. And this prevention part and the readiness to change part, they really complement each other. The prevention or the prevention index measures the position if the municipality is on a rather low level or maybe in an in a average level or in a rather high level itself and maybe compared to others. And the readiness part of the readiness index shows more the level of readiness for change and also gives some guidance of how to improve further. And we have some uh, suggestions of actions depending on the level of readiness. And if you do that kind of actions that we suggest maybe you could go from one readiness level to another one. And we know for sure that the municipalities, even sometimes neighbor municipalities, are on very different levels of prevention and readiness, and therefore they need different actions. They need different guidance. They have to be treated individually. So we give advice for each planet use municipality or locality, and it's done in dialogue with the partner municipality. So this is the main, main importance, I think, of, of, the, of the whole assessment. We give individual advice in dialogue. This is how it looks like the, the building and components of the prevention index part. The overall prevention index, the overall score, every, all of this, the overall index, but also the subcategories is from zero. 200, zero means that nothing is in place, and 100 means that everything is perfect, everything is in place. And the prevention index consists of these two main categories, the prevention structure and the prevention activities. And below it, you see for the structure, we have three different um, categories, policy work, cooperation, and resources, and they together makes up the prevention structure. And the prevention activities is divided into demand reduction and supply reduction. You need to have actions on the demand and supply. And these two sum together makes up the prevention activity part. So this is the basic structure. And the, um, the structure for the readiness index, the overall readiness index and the sub dimensions is as follows, as you can see. The overall readiness score from again from zero to hundred, and you have five dimensions. So it consists of five dimensions: the readiness index, efforts and actions, what is actually done, knowledge, knowledge, the specific knowledge in the community of the situation, but also knowledge of prevention in general. We are measuring and assessing the leadership. So important to have a strong leadership in alcohol, tobacco, and drug prevention. Is there a strong support from the leaders, so to say? We're also measuring the culture and climate dimension, really focusing on the attitudes, the norms, the, the views on alcohol, tobacco, is it liberal view? Is, is it considered to be important in, in a way? So that is also, of course, very important. And this, the fifth one is resources. And every one of them from zero to 100, 
and summed up, you get the overall readiness index. So when a, when a municipality has taken part in this PCA assessment, the, and they, we have done the data collection, then the municipality, they would have access to, among, um, among um, other things, they will get the scores on the five prevention categories. We will point out and look at some, some specific key indicators. And they will also have the scores on the five redness dimensions that I just showed in the previous slide. They will have access to and get a kind of profile, the prevention profile, profile for their community. We will, we, will, we will show the weaker parts and the stronger parts of the current prevention work. If there are many municipalities that are done, doing this at the same time, in the same region perhaps, there will be some benchmarking. You could compare the specific municipality with others. And they will have specific guidance and recommendations for future actions. And they will also have a report that will be downloaded if you want to. And the results will also be presented in workshops and in PowerPoint presentations. And these workshops that we, that we will have will be after the final results, but also when we have the preliminary findings. Because this kind of dialogue is so important because we get added more information, more qualitative information, a qualitative dimension on top of the quantitative data. So the final recommendations and guidance is really the combination of the baseline quantitative data and the information that we get in this, um, in this dialogue with the municipalities. For the prevention index and prevention capacity, both the prevention and the readiness, we are also dividing it up into five levels. Um, so the, the level one is that the prevention work is really on a low level or the readiness is on a low level. The second level is rather low. The third is kind of average or medium, not good, not very high, but not, not, not low in between. The fourth level is rather high. And the fifth level is that you have a high level of prevention work or maybe a high level of readiness, which is, of course, what we all strive for. When a municipality in this particular case, we call it X municipality X. Um, they will, we will show the results, the overall result. And this is uh, in comparison with four, with four other municipalities. In this case, the municipality X have a kind of average level of prevention. The prevention index, the overall prevention is on an average level, a yellow color on the bar. This gives just, you know, a kind kind of um, benchmarking, how, how are we in relation to other municipalities? And that should be other municipalities that are relevant to compare with, of course. So if we then break this down, this um, prevention index, the overall score, and look at its, these two main subcategories, the structures and activities. For this municipality, we can see that the prevention structures are relatively set lower than the prevention activities. And then of course you wonder, okay, the prevention structure could maybe be improved further, but maybe also the prevention activities. And then we look into these two categories and to the, into the five uh, subcategories. The three categories that makes up the prevention structures and the two categories that are make, makes up the prevention activities. Just to give you this example, I will not go into all details, but here you can see that for this municipality, the resources, the resource part, those items that are assessing the resources in terms of human resources and financial resources are rather low on a level two, red color, but also the part measuring cooperation, collaboration is rather low, a score of 20, 21, just above level one. So they are also in level two. And then of course, we are looking into details into these five categories, but maybe with specific focus on resources and cooperation. And when we did that, we could see that they don't have any regular funding when it comes to resources. 
they have a drug coordinator, someone coordinated, but not on a full term basis. We could see that the collaboration with, with other stakeholders was quite weak, so, so that could be further improved. We saw that the uh, collaborations with other NGOs was quite weak, and maybe also that could be improved. Especially if you have, if you are low in resources, the collaboration and cooperation part becomes maybe even more important. Of course, working together in this important area could make a change. And if the resources are on a low level, that, that could add and really facilitate the work even more. Then the municipality will also have their scores on the readiness part. And in this case, the readiness level is not very high, but not very low. It's, it's a, a bit above average, rather high actually, with, with 60 points. And higher than three other municipalities, but lower than compared to the fifth one. So one is higher than three is lower. And if you look specifically what is behind this, this data, behind this bar, we look at the five dimensions for this for this municipality. And then we could see that this the high score is really the cost of a strong um, high score on the leadership dimension, they have strong support, which is very positive, they have a strong support from the leaderships, from the leaders, the local leaders. They do also have some efforts and actions that was also reflecting in the prevention activity part, but they do have efforts and actions, but they are again scoring low on the resources and rather low on culture and climate. But based on this information and all the items that are behind these um, this, um, indexes, we come up with conclusions and recommendations. And for this particular municipality, some of the conclusions are as follows, that they are, are scoring higher on prevention activities, as we just saw, compared to, to the prevention structures. I mean, a lot of work is conducted in this municipality, but based on the um, at least on the readiness scores and the leadership dimension that was really strong, even more actually could be done. And we also stress is the importance that the prevention structures should be and could be improved. If that, if the structures are improved, even more work could, could be done on a more sustainable way perhaps. And especially the collaboration part was, was weak and really needs to be addressed and developed in the future. We saw that the resources were limited, no funds within the regular budget. They had though an alcohol, tobacco and drug coordinator in place, but we believe that the, the, the time devoted for this was a bit limited. So maybe they need a more of a full-time position to make the coordination work even stronger. As I said, the, the readiness part was really high, particularly the leadership part. So that really indicates a strong support from the local leaders, so, so important. So this, this particular municipality is really ready for further development of real prevention work and to strengthen the structures. And this course on the cooperation collaboration part was weak and it is important to strengthen. And as I said previously, especially in light of limited resources. They also had ongoing plans for a steering group, but that was ongoing plans, I think that that could be developed further. So they go from plans to concrete forming of the steering group. This particular municipality were also really high on, on the availability, not the least when it comes to cannabis. So that is also important to focus on reducing the, the availability, the accessibility of alcohol, tobacco and other drugs, not the least cannabis. We also saw looking at the demand reduction um, part, they, they do have a lot of work done, but very much focus on selective or risk group prevention work. There is little on the universal level. So more could be done focusing on universal prevention strategies. So that is five conclusions. And then we could break, give more specific guidance, more specific recommendations. The resource situation when it comes to the structure really needs attention. It should, 
it really needs to think again it's difficult to change maybe the resources but that is a focus area still to strengthen the both financial and human resources and as i just said to strengthen the collaboration with different stakeholders perhaps by forming a kind of a unified team experts policymakers practitioners community members and for the prevention activities more attention to activities and methods to limit the availability is really needed because they were scoring really high on availability and as i said demand reduction pay more attention to universal alcohol tobacco and drug prevention strategies maybe thinking of a kind of multi-component system-wide community approach that focuses on the risk and protective factors like the icelandic prevention model and my last slides this is more or less the different steps that we are uh, doing in the in the pca process of course we have the pre-data collection period so important to do it correctly to start with um, we have to have some kind of culture adaptation of the questions of course we have the frame we have the core category we have the generic category but it has to be framed and made made adaptable to the to the, to the local context maybe some additional questions should be added to, to the questionnaire we do some pilot testing uh, we collect the web web addresses of course this is web-based data collection and of course the signing introduction letters etc then we have the data collection period that will take maybe two three four weeks depending on and then of course the, the post data collection period will that will take maybe eight to ten weeks you get the data back you get the initial results that we present uh, to the planet use partial and to, to perhaps and, and uh, which is the best way to each and every municipality and then after we get the initial results presented and after we get this um, input from from the from the partners we make the final presentation the final report the powerpoints the guidance the reporting uh, and then we also have further workshops with the partner and municipalities in group or individually depending on so thank you for paying attention to this presentation and also wish you a very good luck with your future prevention work prevention work is so important and the alcohol and drug and tobacco situation among young people in many countries across the planet is really too high it should be zero in a way thank you